Okay, we're back for Section 4 in American Network, Commerce and Connection in the Western Hemisphere. So now we're going to look at the American trade networks, with those civilizations from 500 to 1500. Okay, there was no sustained interaction that occurred between the Western and Eastern Hemispheres before the voyages of Columbus. The American trade networks were not as dense as the Afro-Eurasian networks because there were some important limitations. The lack of domesticated large mammals, wheeled vehicles, large ocean-going ships. Unlike Eurasia, um, you know, and, well, there were geographical and environmental obstacles, that north-south orientation, because unlike Eurasia, with the easy east-west uh, trade access, the Americas had serious obstacles traveling in the jungles of the narrow isthmus of Panama. It was hard to um, journey from North to South America uh, going through that landscape. The local and regional commerce flourished, but not long distance trade. The Americas did have a serious or did have a series of regional trade networks that could move goods and cultural practices over hundreds of miles. And the cultural traditions though did not spread as widely as in the Eastern Hemisphere. Now the um, Mesoamerican states such as the Mayan and the Aztecs made themselves wealthy by controlling trade routes through their territory. And much of the trade was in luxury goods. It often provided essential items from distant ecosystems. In the Aztec realm, there were professional merchants called Potka who acted for the state or on their own. Um, that would be, oh, let me make that thinner. Potka. Now, the Incans, or they were different. The Incan used their 20,000-mile road system to run a state-controlled trade network of various commodities from the diverse lands that they controlled. So the Incans um, operated a state-controlled network, trade network. And the loosely interactive web existed from the Great Lakes to the Andes. Uh, cultural elements spread gradually. And there is some evidence of at least indirect contact. Cahokia was at the center of a widespread trading network. Uh, the Amazon and Orinco, Orinoco rivers um, had exchange networks. The Caribbean peoples conducted inner island trade. And even the Chincha people that... Um, along the Pacific coast, traded some with South America. Now, there's a major trade network that operated in Mesoamerica. Uh, Chaco Cannon interacted with Mesoamerica. The Maya, uh, see, Maya and Teotihuacan traded by land. But the Maya also traded by sea on both coasts with dugout canoes. And the Aztecs of the 15th century um, had professional merchants. That's the potka uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier, or wrote on the screen earlier. And there were the major trade networks of the Andes, um, that would be the Incas, like I was telling you about, those were the state-run trade networks. The Inca distributed supplies from their state storehouses along their 20,000 miles of road. And there was some local exchange at fairs and along the borders of the empire, but it was largely a state-controlled trade network. And like I said, various commodities from all of the diverse lands that they controlled. Okay. Here's a map shows you the spread of maize in red. See, it started here in uh, Mesoamerica, spread north and then to the eastern woodlands. It spread through South America, or excuse me, Central America and down through South America. In blue, you can see the Potka trade routes and the Cahokia exchange routes in brown. There we go. 
So this gives you a good idea. And then, of course, in purple, you see the Andean civilization, the Mesoamerican civilization, and then the Mississippi cultural region up here of those eastern woodlands mound builders. And that's it for Section 4 in American Trade Network. So you can see it was very different than the... Uh, silk roads in Eurasia, very different from the sea roads in the Indian Ocean, and the sand roads along the Sahara. I'm going to do um, a reflections video slide as well. Not necessarily material that you'll be covered on, but definitely some critical thinking questions and comments for you to think about that would benefit you, you know, covering the themes that we discuss in this class that will benefit you in the long run.